Hello everybody, what's up? In this video, I'll be reviewing the AMD RX 6600 from Powercolor with PCIe 3.0 configuration at 1080p with 10 games at pretty much the highest settings. Let's see how it performs. The RX 6600 XT is an RDNA 2 graphics card from AMD released on October 21, 2021. It is a cut-down version of the RX 6600 XT from 2048 Steam processors to 1792, a 12.5 decrease in core count, but both have the same 128-bit bus and 8GB of GDDR6 RAM. Though, running at a slower speed at 14 gigabits instead of 16 gigabits of the XT version. The MSRP of this video card is supposed to be $329, though in today's market it will be tricky to find these cards at this price. Though admittedly, the prices are lowering down so that's great, way better than what it was before a couple months ago. This GPU is meant to compete with Nvidia's RTX 3060 12 gigabyte. But often, NVIDIA's counterpart costs way more than the RX 6600 XT, even though they have the same MSRP. AMD is marketing this card as a capable 1080p card, though there's a catch. To unlock its full performance, it's preferred if you have a PCIe 4.0 system, since it only has a 8x PCIe lane instead of the full 16 lanes that the higher tier or older generation cards have. You'll notice the performance difference the most on constrained games that utilizes a lot of VRAM, like Doom Eternal. According to Hardware Unbox, the RX 6600 struggles to deliver its full potential on PCIe 3.0, performing even behind the now 2-year-old 5600 XT. This is the specific model we'll be testing today. It's the cheapest RX 6600 power color offers, so it will be running at pretty much close to the reference spec of AMD. This variant has a boost clock of 2491 MHz and a game speed of 2044 MHz. So during gaming, expect the frequency to fluctuate within that range. As stated earlier, the RX 6600 has 8 GB of GDDR6 14 GB memory. The design is pretty bare bone or minimalistic. It doesn't have any RGB. It has all its need to function properly, no less and no more. Powercolor decided to do this to lower the price of this video card and be closer to MSRP if it's possible. Even though it's a small video card and it doesn't have the biggest heatsink design, it is still capable of running the RX 6600 at great temperature, thanks to its two fans and also RX 6600's power consumption. During gaming, it hovers around 99 watts of power usage. The noise is also decent, I can barely hear it over the case fans or maybe I do not hear it at all. Overall, this video card from Powercolor is pretty good, considering they cheaped out on some aspects. It requires an 8-pin power connector to power it all up. Since it's a small GPU, you can fit it to smaller cases as well. Perfect for those who's looking to build a small computer if you're satisfied with playing games at 1080p. Here is the GPU specification and the driver version. And here is the test system. For multiplayer games, I load up a custom map and do a run that is replicable, then run it 3 times and take the average of those 3 results. Then, for the single player games that have built in benchmark, I use that. If it doesn't have them, I just load up the missions and do the same run 3 times, just like multiplayer games, and I take the average of the 3 results. This is also true when using in-game benchmarks. Valorant runs amazingly on the RX 6600 paired with the R7 5800X. This is pretty much expected since it's a really easy to run game. Even a potato PC can play this game with an average FPS of 629 and 1% loss of 343. The gaming experience with Valorant is amazing. It is not a GPU intensive game, the biggest performance up the field get is if you upgrade your CPU. If you currently have a mid-range GPU, upgrading to an RTX 3080 from RTX 3060 won't be much of a difference, but upgrading from an R5 1600 to an R5 5600 is much more noticeable.
Red Dead Redemption 2 on the other hand is a completely different spectrum. It's a really heavy game for the GPU and it definitely shows here. With the graphics set to the highest preset, at 1080p it delivers 56 FPS average and 1% loss of 45. It's very playable, perfectly fine for enjoying the storylines. Though if you want to achieve 60, you might need to dial down the settings. The RCC 600 is capable of delivering 333 FPS average and 1% loss of 244, not as high as Valorant though. I highly doubt you can sense the difference between 300 and 600 FPS. Hey, you most likely not have a 30Hz monitor. This is to say that the performance of this GPU on ultra settings at 1080p on your Nova 6H is pretty much all you need, and even more than that. Shadow of the Tomb Raider, another AAA title. This game runs at an average FPS of 86 and 1% loss of 73, at the highest preset, at of course, 1080p. This is great considering it's a single player game, you don't need thousands of FPS to enjoy it. This is to say that the performance of the R6600 on Tomb Raider is good even with PCIe 3.0. GTA 5 is a really old game now, but it's still being played so here we are with the benchmarks. This AMD GPU is capable of giving 131 FPS average and 1% loss of 108 at very high settings. This is really satisfactory performance. I don't think you'll complain about this gaming experience with the RX 600. Fortnite runs good with the RX 6600, an average FPS of 82 and 1% loss of 50. It's good enough for casual players who want to play Fortnite at ultra preset. Though if you're a competitive gamer, then surely you run the game at low settings. Heck, you might even load the performance mode then. Expect more than 144 FPS average. It won't have any problems running your 144Hz monitor at 1080p. Another AAA title. This little video card from PowerColor gives us an average FPS of 78 and 1% plus of 57. That's great performance for a title that needs to watch the GPU. You enjoy the story like it's intended to with the RX 6600. This is also running the game at ultra high preset at 1080p. There are no complaints. Borderlands 3 runs pretty similarly to Horizon Zero Dawn, an average FPS of 74 and 1% loss of 65 at badass preset. The RX 600 is capable of running it at a decent frame rate. Though this being an FPS co-op shooter, I would prefer having at least 90 FPS, but since we're running the game at badass settings, we can just lower the settings a bit to achieve that, so the performance in this game is quite good. Apex Legends is a particular esports title. Most of these types of games doesn't tax the GPU as much, like CSGO for example, or even Valorant, like we saw earlier. Apex on the other hand requires a bit of GPU horsepower, not as much as AAA single player titles but still harder to run compared to League of Legends. But that being said, the R6600 almost got close to my monitor's refresh rate. An average FPS of 139 and 1% loss of 121. The gaming experience with this GPU is great. Cyberpunk 2077 runs good with the RX 6600. This game is really hard to run for the GPUs. The RX 6600 was able to break uh, the 50 FPS mark, an average FPS of 54 and 1% loss of 39, but since it also has some aspect of FPS shooter, I would have preferred 90, but 60 is good enough. We're running the game at the highest preset though at 1080p, so lowering it a little bit will definitely yield us stable 60 FPS or even more than that. And finally, all those games are done. 
So if you have an older motherboard that only supports PCIe 3.0, is the RX 6600 worth it? According to my findings, with this benchmark, I'd say yes. Unfortunately, I don't have a motherboard with PCIe 4.0 capabilities, so I cannot tell you how much FPS you'll gain by switching to 4.0. Though, seeing my numbers, the FPS is pretty good. It's pretty similar to 2020's RX 5600 with 2 more gigabytes of VRAM and lower power consumption. Stay tuned for that video where I compare the RX 6600 against the RX 5600 XT with PCIe 3.0 and see how big the difference is. For my conclusion, if you're running an older budget mid-range GPU from 2016 or 2017 like the RX 580 or the GTX 1060, the RX 600 is a good upgrade. Depends on the price of course, though if you have an RX 5600 plus GPU like me, let's say just wait for the next generations of GPU or higher tier current gen GPU. It all depends on the price though, at around 300 euros, this GPU has a decent price to performance even with PCIe 3.0 at 1080p. Thanks for watching the video everybody, I appreciate your support. Leave a like if you liked the video, subscribe to not miss upcoming YouTube videos. If you have questions or suggestions or anything, just type in the comments. I will reply when possible. Share this video if you know someone would want to see it. I appreciate all of you viewers of this channel. Take care and see you next time. Bye.